Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at Casper's Testnet 11 and we're obviously opening up for public release again so you can actually test this out yourself. I'm just trying to make you guys aware that you can test out the network, see how it's working. We're going to go through the article here and explain some more things and then we'll basically look at how Testnet 11 is going to actually improve going forward in the future. So they have an article here for Testnet 11 and it just says here on the evening of January 7th Another pivotal role in the chapter of Casper will be written in code and history on the second unveiling of the Testnet 11. So we've already had the Testnet 11 public release before and I believe it was around four or five months ago that we were allowed to test on it. This is the public release in the second expedition into the Rust codebase that brings the promise of the impossible 10 blocks per second on a proof of work network. The digital experiment provides an arena where developers and enthusiasts will come together to push the envelope, exploring the dynamics of Phantom Ghost Stack. Testnet 11 is far more a proving ground, it's a digital recreation of the real world. So obviously they're testing out the network to see how it's going to run when they bring it onto mainnet. Focused on simulating and stress testing a miniature version of the entire ecosystem, a world's worth of transactions, all anxious to settle instantly to buy their favorite snacks. So just talking about how we can use the confirmation times from testnet 11 or the Rust update to actually settle confirmations and transactions instantly. It's evolution on fast forward where the protocol endures rigorous trials, loads of simulated throughput, real world mining and use, all while ensuring efficiency and security against real world scenarios. Rewriting the Casper programming language from Go to Rust is an essential development to enhance performance and manage the complexities of BlockDAG. This translation enables the groundbreaking achievement of 10 blocks per second. Obviously, we have talked about 32 blocks per second and even 100 blocks per second, but it looks like we are starting out at 10. Right now, I believe we were going to go for 8 blocks per second at the start, but they just, I guess, rounded it up to 10 blocks per second which allows for greater scalability and throughput. So more transactions allowed on the network, it's not going to actually increase the speed of the network because we're already at one second block times. So that means that that means if you wanted to increase speed, you'd have to increase the block time on the network. That's not what we're going for here because it's extremely fast already. So we're up in the throughput or transactions per second. So this can go upwards of 3000 transactions per second on the test net. So this is 10 blocks per second as demonstrated in the successful first public release of testnet 11. The Rust programming language offers advantages such as higher efficiency and improved performance, memory safety, interoperability, error handling, and growing crypto ecosystem and developer community. Since the first public testnet 11 captivated the crypto world, several enhancements have been implemented to optimize network efficiency and performance. So they grabbed all the data from the first testnet 11 and obviously they have looked at the problems that they had at the time and now they're going to go through those problems and hopefully they're fixed within this next public release of testnet 11. Storage efficiency has also advanced with updates addressing the issue of quadratic writes in high blocks per second context, refining the network's data processing and storage capabilities. These updates along with smaller caching through dynamic data tracking and enhancements like parallel processing for block submissions signify a considerable leap forward for Casper. So the main thing that we would want to look at is obviously participating in testnet 11. So actually running your own testnet 11 node and obviously mining to that node. So here participating in testnet 11 is straightforward, primarily focusing on software requirements, the essential software needed for Rusty Casper which acts as a portal seamlessly connecting your system to the network. This enables synchronization with other nodes on testnet 11. You have the option to run the node as it is, which is a straightforward way to participate. However, Rusty Casper also opens the door for additional testing if you want to explore further. So this is just the node that you can run and it's on the GitHub here. If you go to caspad and it should be all here and you go on releases, scroll down and just Download the one which corresponds to your operating system. It should start running and I believe you have to check the box for the test net instead of running the main net, I believe. And then there's a further way to participate and this is by CPU mining. You're not going to get anything in return for this. It's just more stress testing for the network so they can see how mining works with this 10 blocks per second. And it's going to be done on CPUs. So 
CPU mining is the exclusive method for mining in testnet 11 and is a crucial aspect of the process. By participating, you contribute to testnet 11 computational strength. The advantage here is the simplicity and accessibility. You don't need any specialized mining hardware or software to get involved. Testnet 11 comes equipped with its own CPU miner, making it easy for anyone to participate in this capacity. I believe that you can just do the CPU miner through the actual node as it comes. Although transaction simulating using this tool is optional, if you decide to mine on testnet 11, it's vital to use CPU mining. So we did have some people on the last release of the testnet that were actually using GPUs, and that was actually creating way more blocks than the network could handle, and it was basically invalidating them. So what they want is mainly CPU miners. I believe that there was ways to GPU mine, but there's also nothing to gain from GPU mining on the testnet. This method is the designated approach for mining in the network. This simplifies and democratizes participation, enabling a broader range of users to contribute and interact with the network's features. So I'm sure that they're just obviously testing on CPUs and then they might do further testing through GPUs and ASICs because we're at ASICs now, so there's not really any point in testing for CPUs as we go on into the future of testing because we will obviously be on ASICs as the network comes to fruition when Rust comes over. For hardware setup, so this is what you need. You need at least 16 gigabytes of RAM, eight core CPU, and 128 gigabytes of SSD drive to handle the demands of testnet 11 environmentally efficiently. So it's slightly higher than I believe what Casper is running at now. If you're running a Casper node on the Golang, I don't think you need as much cores or RAM, but as the blocks per second increase, this setup or at least hardware requirements are also going to increase. So just be wary of that if you want to run a node later on in the future. If they do decide to up the blocks per second, you would have to look for higher RAM, more cores on your CPU and more SSD. So we all know that right now we're operating at one blocks per second, but this is the test net for 10 blocks per second. And as it says here, it marks a significant stride in cryptocurrency innovation, offering a unique platform for testing and the crucial step in the quest to push the boundaries to achieve the ultimate goal of 100 blocks per second. If we had 100 blocks per second, that would be around 300,000 transactions per second on the network, which is basically unheard of even with staking coins. So to have it in a proof of work layer one coin would be an incredible feat. However, it's probably going to take a while before that even has the idea to come out into fruition. We obviously have to test the 10 blocks per second and then push it up further as the network goes on. So right here, if you want an overview of what this 10 blocks per second is going to look like on the network, here we have it. So you can see it's going very quickly. And these are all blocks that would contain transactions in theory. And this is mainly why people would want the 10 blocks per second is because you have, you know, 3000 transactions per second within the second, and they're all confirmed basically instantly. As you can see here, this block, for example, has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 confirmations within this, you know, two to three second period that we see here, even less than that. So the main advantage is obviously it confirms pretty much instantly on the network and the transaction goes through within the second, hopefully. So we can see how quickly that's moving. If we go over to the graph inspector right now, we can see how slowly Casper is moving at the current network speed. So blocks are getting added once per second, or in theory, you can have three blocks per second, but then it will go to one to balance it out. The confirmation times are slightly higher. The network is still very quick. That's the thing. Casper network is still very quick right now in terms of the blocks. It's quicker than a lot of other cryptocurrencies still, but this 10 blocks per second is gonna make it extremely quick and higher transactions per second. And when we're talking about the speed of the network, we're talking about confirmations on the network, not the actual speed of blocks produced because we're not gonna increase the transaction speed necessarily. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. That was just a quick update on the Rusty Casper. As I said, the GitHub's there if you wanna download it and test it out. Make sure you like the video and subscribe for more content like this.